We have some very exciting awards. This is the fun part. Um, let me just start. I'm Amber Salzman. I am privileged to be one of the ALD Connect board members since its inception and really have enjoyed my colleagues and everyone here. And it's been wonderful how everyone embraced everybody in this room and outside. So for those who don't know, uh, my family got diagnosed with ALD over 20 years ago. And at that time, you couldn't just Google stuff as easy as you could now. But when we got the diagnosis, um, we really scoured the literature and the experts to figure out the best approaches. We know there wasn't that much. And one of the um, physician scientists that we came across was Patrick Oberg. And he was a neurologist. He is a neurologist um, who has been working on ALD, among other diseases, for years. He did a stint at Kennedy Krieger with Hugo Mosier. He can be credited with cloning the ALD gene, which was critical, and then went back. And when I came across uh, Patrick, he was at Hôpital saint Vincent. And fortunately, he was also working with Nathalie Cardier, who is here. And I'm sorry if I'm botching the French pronunciations of stuff. Um, and what was so impressive was when we reached out to Patrick to try to see what work was being done and in what ways we could help streamline it, he really welcomed us with open arms. Uh, myself and my sister, uh, Rachel, flew to the hospital. I don't know if you remember, it was a cold and icky day in France in this conference room you guys put us up in. And unlike all the other wonderful meals I've had in France, it was kind of lukewarm tea and crackers. But it was not, it didn't matter. Both Patrick and Natalie entertained us for hours with our questions in terms of all the different work that was going on. And what Patrick kind of portrayed was that while they have tried so many different aspects to get at the disease, what he did know was that if you intervened at the right time with a stem cell transplant, you could halt cerebral ALD. However, we all know how dangerous that is. So he and Natalie embarked upon something which they heard of, gene therapy. And now you're talking 20 years ago when there was uh, very little good work going on. There was a lot of dangerous work going on. When I met them, it was probably a year or so after Jesse Gelsinger had died in the infamous gene therapy trial. But they both said, we're going to figure out how to make this work for ALD. And they reviewed what work they had generated, where there were obstacles, and where potentially we could be helpful in terms of pushing things forward. So the reason why this word is so uh, impactful, as we know, Bluebird took the work that was published in Science in 2009 by Patrick and Natalie and their colleagues, and then formed a company which led to Bluebird Bio taking it uh, much, much further and, and clearly, excitingly getting it approved. So unfortunately, Patrick could not join us today. We're so thrilled and honored to have Natalie here. But what I am going to play for you is when the 2000, so the first patient was treated September 11th, 2006, which is Alain Fisher's birthday, I'm sure you remember, who was the transplanter treating him. Um, and the first paper describing the positive results was in 2009 in Science. And we uh, videotaped Patrick to try to help explain this to the ALD population. So this is on YouTube. You can always listen to the whole thing. But I think just to give a sense of it, we'll play the first three, question, the first three uh, questions he addresses. And you do have to listen carefully because he does have a very um, thick French accent. Twenty years ago, uh, we showed that uh, bone marrow transplantation with, uh, from uh, using cells from a donor is able to arrest uh, the cerebral disease, provided uh, this procedure is performed at the early stage of the disease. But uh, uh, it is not always possible to make bone marrow transplantation because of the lack of donor of cord blood. And in addition, uh, bone marrow transplantation is associated with significant risk, in particular in adults. 
So the idea was uh, to use the uh, round bone marrow cells of the patients and introduce a normal copy of the LD gene using a uh, new uh, uh, vector therapy. Up to now, we have treated uh, two boys who were candidates for bone marrow transplantation but without donor. And overall, we can say with confidence that uh, more than two years after gene therapy, their brain disease has been arrested uh, in an identical way as it could have been arrested following bone marrow transplantation. That is, uh, <coughs> the brain lesion have progressed a little bit after gene therapy, and it is the same after bone marrow transplantation, and roughly 14 months after gene therapy, the brain lesion has been arrested, and I, I am quite confident that it will be arrested for life now. It could not, could not have been possible to do gene therapy in these two boys, so disease will have progressed markedly, and they will be now in a very severe condition with loss of vision, loss of all mental function, a loss of working in a late stage of the disease, and with a very high risk to, 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 to die uh, in a few months or let's say in a couple of years. So I, I don't think I can adequately express the blood, sweat, and tears that Natalie and Patrick put into, I mean, I know I was meeting them weekends, evenings, all hours, traveling wherever they needed to be. Um, and it was a true act and devotion to patients. And there was a lot of tears along with it. There were frustrations when there were other trials where there was um, negative data. Things halted for a while. There were ups and downs. And it was really through their perseverance, stamina, drive, and true eye on the ball to get this treatment out to patients. So an award is such a, it's not even close to what they deserve in terms of getting this forward to address ALD. So it's with love and affection beyond that I am so privileged to provide the award. Let me bring Natalie, come up here for yours. So uh, I, I'm, I'm going to continue this story uh, from where Amber um, uh, left off, just to say that it was really what Natalie and Patrick did, uh, uh, you know, 20 years ago, that set the stage for um, us pursuing uh, gene therapy in the U.S. and a, a, a long journey of more than a dozen years. I remember. Um, um, Patrick presenting in a hotel in London, and um, Hugo has always had deep uh, Hugo most a deep admiration for Patrick, and was um, uh, but also felt a, a, a certain competitive edge with him, and he was sitting in the uh, lobby of the bar afterwards with me, and he said that Patrick he always makes me look like a pedestrian. And uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, that was a moment uh, when I, I, I realized, you know, uh, we we should really make an effort um, to ride a little on on the sails of uh, Patrick and Natalie and bring some of these um, these major contributions forward. And I, I thought I'd put up this slide just to show um, the timeline here of of gene therapy. And uh, Natalie had to take her glasses off. I have to put my glasses on. Um, but you can see here in red the, the early uh, steps that were taken by, um, by Patrick and, and Natalie in terms of bone marrow transplantations and, um, and, and performing then. Uh, it, Pat Patrick also did the first successful bone marrow transplantation um, after um, uh, uh, the first attempt at Johns Hopkins here, and then this inspired the the, the work 
on using ex vivo lentiviral gene therapy. Um, so this was a 13-year a uh, journey uh, in the U.S. with many ups and downs, and really it took a village and a lot of people who were contributing to this. Um, and um, and I think through a lot of perseverance and and hard work and an element of 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 luck and and really being part of a larger community, I think uh, that has really made a difference. But I think it's really Patrick and, and Natalie that we have to thank for uh, starting this journey. So just to highlight what this award is about, this is the Ann B. Moser Award um, in an honor presented by ALD Connect to recognize unusually impactful contributions to the ALD community at large and to recognize major milestones in the history of the disease. So I'm also going to hand uh, the award for Patrick to Natalie, who will accept this on uh, his behalf. Thank you so much, Florian, and, and everyone here for that. It's a huge, huge honor for, for me, for Patrick, to receive this award. <coughs> Sorry. It's also very emotional because, as you just heard, it's been a very, very long sto story. If I tell you when we started, um, I, was a resi I was finishing my residency. Patrick was coming back from the lab from Hugo Mother, and as you just said, he was finally uh, cloning the gene for ALD. And one, uh, one evening, I told him, you know, now that you have your gene, if you want to do gene therapy, I will do it with you. And we started, it was 92. So it's, uh, it has been uh, finally a 30 year story because we, we started little by little, it was the beginning of gene therapy. We had a very poorly efficient viral vector to, to use to do the, the, cure, the cure of the hematopoietic cells. And it was only when we got the HIV virus that was shown to eventually be a, a good tool to do gene therapy that really things have changed. But uh, having HIV was really a complicated thing because at this time people would say, you're not gonna treat patients with HIV. And we said, yes, we will, because it's, of course, it was an inactivated vector and everything. And we thought we had no choice because this was the, the only way we, we could have the treatment for patients. And I must say it has been, during this, all these years, a very, very important team effort. And when I say team, I, I, I'm talking about patients, advocacy groups, uh, working a lot with ELA for many years and seeing patients every year and every year saying, they were asking me, so when, when do you start? And I would say, yes, we're going to start soon. And this was extremely inspiring to us because we knew it takes too much time, but we did our best to accelerate everything, particularly with the regulatory agencies that would say, oh, HIV, this is the first time it was not so easy to, to do, but we did. And me Meeting Amber and uh, Rachel Salzman has been so important for us and for the ALD field because they pushed us so much and they, they had us meet the right people at the right time. We went to the US, we met Cell Genesis. Cell Genesis was a company that made the clinical vector for us for free. And it's, it seems today so incredible that we had this chance at that time. And so we met great people there. We met people like Gabor Verres, who has been implicated in so many years for that. And then we met the Bluebird people, and everything went through like that. But as you've seen, it has taken like uh, 30 years. So big team efforts from the very beginning, and I, I think of Aurora Pujol, who is here, I think of Stéphane Kemp, who's here, who has been also so important from the very beginning. And after that, of course, Florian, David Williams. And so I, I'm forgetting a lot of people, so please um, my, excuse me if I do, but uh, really think of all the people that were needed to do such work. So we were there, but we were not alone. And thank you so much, everyone, uh, for, for recognizing that. <clears throat> 